Hi everyone, welcome to Hub Bites. I'm Sunil Reggae, consultant psychiatrist. Today I'll be talking about 12 tips for medical students to make the most of your psychiatry rotation. Now, although I say medical students, this will be applicable for any mental health professionals or individuals wanting to do psychology, social work, and working with mental health patients overall. But I'm gonna focus predominantly talking to medical students and help you make the most of your psychiatry rotation. So let's get started. First, don't go in with any assumptions. Psychiatry, from my perspective, is medicine's best kept secret, especially for those with an inquisitive mind and ones that can deal with a bit of uncertainty, that like uncertainty, that like solving that uncertainty and that use a problem solving style after gathering facts. So if you think about Sherlock Holmes, this is the field that really allows you to be like Sherlock Holmes, gathering facts and then eliminating the impossible so that what remains then at the end is as close to the truth as possible. Note that we're not, that in some cases we may never ever know what the exact truth is, but we use a process of elimination. So it's a really great detective way of thinking when you enter psychiatry. So have a think about that when you're doing a rotation and seeing patients. Try to let go of your previous misconceptions. Try to let go of things that you've heard from other people and go in really fresh and allow psychiatry to teach you. Two, know that what you'll see is only the tip of the iceberg. Six months or less as part of a psychiatry rotation, seeing a single individual's decade or decades long journey, you see a tiny snapshot only. So know that right at the start. When you compare that to medicine or surgery where time from initial diagnosis to an outcome, in many cases, treatments are available, there is that quick positive reinforcement and you know the patient gets better. Psychiatry is a little bit different. It's a lot about delayed gratification, working with the patient and the families over an extended period and it can be extremely rewarding. So know that what you'll be seeing is a tiny snapshot. Third, be an observer. As I mentioned earlier, go in with a curious mind and observe. Psychiatry involves learning skills that are necessary for success in life in general. You know, you have to realize the truth of biologist Julian Huxley's idea that life is just one damn relatedness after another, is the links that you make, the things that you see and trying to connect it to life. So you must have the models and you must see the relatedness and the effects from the relatedness. In other words, it's no different to what Charlie Munger said, is that you are developing a lattice work of mental models. The beauty of psychiatry is that you don't see things just from a biological perspective. You've got biological models, philosophical models, psychological models, social models. Physics may come in, statistics may come in, culture may come in, diet comes in, lifestyle, etc. You're building this lattice work of models upon which you try to connect and make sense of life in general as well. Fourth, think like a problem solver and a strategist. So what you're doing during a rotation is thinking about how do I take a bird's eye view of the issue? Biopsychosocial, cultural, diet and lifestyle understanding. Deconstructing the issue and really thinking broadly in terms of what are the key issues in this case? And then think like a strategist. Implement a plan once the problem is understood. It's no different to what Einstein said. If I had only one hour to solve a problem, I would spend 55 minutes defining the problem and five minutes finding the solution. So understanding is the key. And here you will develop skills by being observant and keeping curious mind. You're developing skills to look at things from a bird's eye perspective. Five, focus on communication skills in history taking, empathy, empathetic communication, and providing psychoeducation to patients, families, other team members. This is a great opportunity to develop some great communication skills that we know are very, very valuable for life in general. Six, learn the skills of persuasion. Now, psychiatry gives you a great opportunity to understand the principles of influence and persuasion. And this is not only when we're dealing with patients, 
but also other individuals. How can we communicate certain things, listen, validate, acknowledge, but at the same time, try to implement a plan that we want to implement. At all times, recognizing patient autonomy, care autonomy, etc. And we know that the principles, you know, and this is in the book Influence, reciprocity, commitment and consistency, social proof based on your experience, other patients have done X, Y, Z, patients are more likely to buy in, liking bias, authority bias, and scarcity bias. These are all ways of influence. Now, not, of course, not all of these apply. What I'm trying to highlight here is that by understanding the principles, many of these things can be utilized in life in general. Seven, everything in psychiatry is a risk benefit analysis. And just like in life, there is no free lunch. Every step that you take in life is a risk benefit analysis. So when you're thinking about why certain medications are prescribed, why certain psychotherapeutic options are considered, it's all about a risk benefit analysis. The risk of not providing that treatment and versus the risks of providing that treatment. What are the side effects, etc. Ultimately, if the benefits outweigh the risks, then we propose that. So it gives you a great opportunity to hone your skills of risk benefit analysis, which are crucial in life in general. Eight, you enter into a whole new world of psychopharmacology, psychotherapy, and understanding of social determinants of how they influence health. Psychopharmacology, a whole new world that you can learn of receptors, neurotropic factors, neuroinflammation. It's amazing. So ask questions and know that these are the sort of things to learn about. For example, antidepressants aren't just about serotonin receptors. They aren't just about dopamine and noradrenaline. BDNF comes in. Take, for example, fluvoxamine, evidence based in the treatment of preventing hospitalization and COVID-19. Anti-inflammatory properties, melatonin, thermogenic, metabolic enhancement, weight loss, and anti-inflammatory. Recent paper on sertraline with its anti-inflammatory effects, like so many fascinating things that span the mind body. Psychotherapy, a whole new world of defense mechanisms which are applicable to your life, your relationships. Understanding these defense mechanisms, why do people behave the way they do? What is projective identification? What is splitting? Is this happening in this particular dynamic with patient and the team, for example? And knowing this will help you understand the world better. Why do people do the things that they do? And it might make a difference to better relationships in your life as well. Next, listen to patients. Their stories will tell you a lot. So remember that all these stories uh, that patients tell you have meaning to them. And what you're trying to do, of course, is to help them through that story, but their stories will give you clues about the pathogenesis of the psychiatric disorder. It will give you clues as to what treatments need to be put in place, who to involve, who are the important people in their life, all of those things. And this is what makes psychiatry fascinating. It's just like Osla said, you know, we are really focusing on the person, not the illness. Nine, get a feel for work-life balance in psychiatry. Ask your registrars, ask consultants why they chose psychiatry. From my perspective, well, to give you a hint, it's great. Great work-life balance. Other medical specialties often criticize psychiatry or, you know, it's not uncommon to show shock when someone is picking up psychiatry after medical school to say, I've heard things like, well, you're so good at medicine, why are you going into psychiatry? Without recognizing that psychiatry is one of the crucial fields of medicine. And what's fascinating in psychiatry, we've got psycho-oncology, psychocardiology, psychoneuroimmunology, psychoneuroendocrinology. It's amazing with the advances that is happening. You do a lot of medicine. And from my perspective, it is one of the most intellectually stimulating across all fields. Most certainly think about the enjoyment when you're thinking about choosing certain fields as well because longevity is key. It's not about doing something for a short while and then just really getting burnt out. 10, you're able to hone your medicine differently. Why? Because psychiatric disorders have a high degree of medical comorbidity. The mind and the body are linked. There is no mind-body dichotomy. The blood-brain barrier is not impenetrable. What happens in the rest of the body inflammation can pass through the blood-brain barrier and result in neuroinflammation, for example. So try to challenge the mind-body dichotomy when you're doing psychiatry. Think about the comorbidities and you will see a number of prodromal medical conditions. So think about how you would treat them if you were to do another specialty later on. Think about conditions such as anti-NMD encephalitis, metabolic abnormalities, EEGs, myocardial infarction rates, for example, pain disorders, biopsychosocial model in pain. So many different things span the mind and the body. So take a holistic view of the patient and you have a great opportunity to hone your medical skills. Think about the multidisciplinary team. You work 
as part of a team, which is great. Social workers, psychologists, nurses, you know, mental health nurses, nurse practitioners, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, consumer consultants, individuals with lived experience, carer consultants, the clinical director, so many different individuals as part of the team. And what we do recognize is often in problem solving, more heads are better than one head. So it's a field that also imparts a lot of humility and actually developing that humility is crucial for success in life in general, being a humble person overall. And lastly, ask questions. Tap into different ways of thinking, not just from seniors in a way, consultants, registrars, but your entire team. Ask questions and of course, be curious about patients as well. Note how unique humans are. So those are my 12 tips for you as a medical student to make the most of your psychiatric rotation. Do the above and if nothing else, you will start viewing the world differently, both in your day-to-day -day work and outside. So I hope that you found this video useful. See you in another edition of Hub Bites soon. Take care, stay safe, bye-bye. <laughs>